Greater Iran refers to the regions of the Caucasus, West Asia, Central Asia, and parts of South Asia that have significant Iranian cultural influence due to having been either long historically ruled by the various Iranian empires, having considerable aspects of Persian culture in their own culture or due to extensive contact with the various empires based in Persia or are simply nowadays still inhabited by a significant amount of Iranic-speaking people who patronize their respective cultures. It roughly corresponds to the territory on the Iranian plateau and its bordering plains. It is also referred to as Greater Persia, while the Encyclopedia Iranica uses the term Iranian cultural continent. The term Iran is not limited to the modern state of Iran, but includes all the territory ruled by the Iranians, including Mesopotamia, eastern Anatolia, all of the Caucasus and Central Asia. The concept of Greater Iran has its source in the history of the First Persian Empire and persists and overlaps to a certain extent with the history of Iran. After the Arab conquests, Iran lost many of the territories gained under the Safavid dynasty, including Iraq to the Ottomans, western Afghanistan to the British, and all its Caucasus territories to Russia during the Russo-Persian Wars in the course of the 19th century. The Treaty of Gulistan in 1813 resulted in Iran definitively dropping territorial claims on Dagestan, Kartli Kakatai, and most of Azerbaijan in favor of the Russia. After the Russo-Persian War, the Turkmenchi Treaty of 1828 ended centuries of Iranian control of its Caucasian provinces and set the modern boundary along the Aras River. In 1935, the endonym Iran was made the official international name by Reza Shah when he adopted it as the new name of Persia, the country under his direct rule. Etymology The name Iran, meaning land of the Aryans, is the new Persian continuation of the old genitive plural Aryan arm, first attested in the Avastar as Arianum. The Proto-Iranian term Aryan arm is present in the term Arian of Asia, the homeland of Zoroaster and Zoroastrianism, near the provinces of Sogdian, Marjana, Bactria, etc., listed in the first chapter of the Vidavdad. The Avastan evidence is confirmed by Greek sources. Aryan is spoken of as being between Persia and the Indian subcontinent. However, this is a Greek pronunciation of the name Haroyam, Hariva, which the Greeks called Arya, a land listed separately from the homeland of the Aryans. While up until the end of the Parthian period in the 3rd century CE, the idea of Iran had an ethnic, linguistic, and religious value. It did not yet have a political import. The idea of an Iranian empire or kingdom in a political sense is a purely Sasanian one. It was the result of a convergence of interests between the new dynasty and the Zoroastrian clergy, as we can deduce from the available evidence. This convergence gave rise to the idea of an Ran Sahr, Kingdom of the Iranians, which was a definition. Richard Foltz notes that while a general assumption is often made that the various Iranian peoples of Greater Iran, a cultural area that stretched from Mesopotamia and the Caucasus into Khwarezm, Transoxiana, Bactria, and the Pamirs and included Persians, Medes, Parthians and Sogdians among others, were all Zoroastrians in pre-Islamic times. This view, even though common among serious scholars, is almost certainly overstated. Foltz argues that while the various Iranian peoples did indeed share a common pantheon and pool of religious myths and symbols, in actuality a variety of deities were worshipped, particularly Mitra, the god of covenants, and Anahita, the goddess of the waters but also many others, depending on the time, place, and particular group concerned. To the ancient Greeks, Greater Iran ended at the Indus. Richard Nelson Fry defines Greater Iran as including much of the Caucasus, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan and Central Asia, with cultural influences extending to China and Western India. According to Fry, Iran means all lands and peoples where Iranian languages were in a spoken and where in the past. 
multifaceted Iranian cultures existed, according to J. P. Mallory and Douglas Q. Adams Most of Western Greater Iran spoke southwestern Iranian languages in the Achaemenid era while the Eastern Territory spoke Eastern Iranian languages related to Avestan. George Lane also states that after the dissolution of the Mongol Empire, the Ilkhanids became rulers of Greater Iran and Uljechu, according to Judith G. Kolbeis, was the ruler of this expanse between 1304 to 1317 AD. Primary sources, including Timur and historian Mirkwand, define Iran Shah as extending from the Euphrates to the Oxus traditionally, and until recent times, ethnicity has never been a defining separating criterion in these regions. In the words of Richard Nelson Fry, only in modern times did Western colonial intervention and ethnicity tend to become a dividing force between the provinces of Greater Iran. As Patrick Clawson states, ethnic nationalism is largely a 19th century phenomenon. Even if it is fashionable to retroactively extend it, Greater Iran, however, has been more of a cultural superstate rather than a political one to begin with. In the work Nuzar al Ayyub, the medieval geographer Hamdala Mustafi wrote, Some cities in Iran are above the rest, better and more productive due to good weather, Ganja full of treasure in Arin, and Esfahan in Iraq, Merv in Tus in Khorasan, and Konya in Rome. The Cambridge History of Iran takes a geographical approach in referring to the historical and cultural entity of Greater Iran as areas of Iran, parts of Afghanistan, and Chinese and Soviet Central Asia. A detailed list of these territories follows in this article. In Persian Literature Greater Iran has several displays in Persian Literature. Background Greater Iran is called Iran Zamin which means the land of Iran. Iran Zamin was in the mythical times opposed to the Turan Zamin the land of Turun, which was located in the upper part of Central Asia. In the pre-Islamic period, Iranians distinguished two main regions in the territory they ruled, one Iran and the other an Iran. By Iran they meant all the regions inhabited by ancient Iranian peoples. That region was much vaster than it is today. This notion of Iran as a territory can be seen as the core of early Greater Iran. Later many changes occurred in the boundaries and areas where Iranians lived but the languages and culture remained the dominant medium in many parts of the Greater Iran. As an example, the Persian language was the main literary language and the language of correspondence in Central Asia and Caucasus prior to the Russian occupation. Central Asia being the birthplace of modern Persian language. Furthermore, according to the British government, Persian language was also used in Iraqi Kurdistan. Prior to the British occupation and mandate in 1918-1932, with Imperial Russia continuously advancing south in the course of two wars against Persia, and the treaties of Turkmenche and Gulistan in the western frontiers, plus the unexpected death of Abbas Mirza in 1823, and the murdering of Persia's Grand Vizier, many Central Asian Khanates began losing hope for any support from Persia against the Tsarist armies. The Russian armies occupied the Aral Coast in 1849, Tashkent in 1864, Bukhara in 1867, Samarkand in 1868, and Kiva and Amudaria in 1873. Many Iranians consider their natural sphere of influence to extend beyond Iran's present borders. After all, Iran was once much larger. Portuguese forces seized islands and ports in the 16th and 17th centuries. In the 19th century, the Russian Empire wrested from Tehran's control what is today Armenia, Republic of Azerbaijan, and part of Georgia. Iranian elementary school texts teach about the Iranian roots not only of cities like Baku, 
but also cities further north like Dubent in southern Russia. The Shah lost much of his claim to western Afghanistan following the Anglo-Iranian War of 1856-1857. Only in 1970 did a UN-sponsored consultation end Iranian claims to suzerainty over the Persian Gulf island nation of Bahrain. In centuries past, Iranian rule once stretched westward into modern Iraq and beyond. When the Western world complains of Iranian interference beyond its borders, the Iranian government often convinced itself that it is merely exerting its influence in lands that were once its own. Simultaneously, Iran's losses at the hands of outside powers have contributed to a sense of grievance that continues to the present day. Patrick Clawson of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, Iran today is just a rump of what it once was. At its height, Iranian rulers controlled Iraq, Afghanistan, a western Pakistan, much of Central Asia, and the Caucasus. Many Iranians today consider these areas part of a greater Iranian sphere of influence. Patrick Clawson, since the days of the Achaemenids, the Iranians had the protection of geography, but high mountains and vast emptiness of the Iranian plateau were no longer enough to shield Iran from the Russian army or British navy, both literally and figuratively. Iran shrank.